thank you so much, Hong, for um, for coming today and all the work that you do with FOSS Asia and OSI um, and for stepping up uh, to take on Josh's role today. So I know that was uh, last minute. Thank you very much again for having me. And I'm sorry, this I am woman. So yeah, and please introduce yourself too as well. Yes, I will. Yeah. So um, thank you um, for having me. I'm going to speak about building bridges between open source communities based on the story of Force Asia and its appearance. I can over the past uh, 10 years of building community um, in Asia. A little bit about myself. Um, I'm one of the founders of the Force Asia organization. Uh, I also act as the vice president at the Open Source Initiative and uh, work on uh, inner sort topic as Zalando. So, um, so based on what I written here, I just want to say I'm really lucky to be able to work with different communities in three uh, continents uh, around the world. And um, I'm really looking forward to, to share more um, uh, of the stories today. Uh, a little bit about Force Asia and the journey of how we actually building a community um, uh, since the start. So Force Asia, um, basically the idea is to foster open source uh, movement in Asia and and, and the regions met like over ten years ago. Of course, open source uh, term is a, is already there, but you know uh, when you look at the, the the contribution map of people around the world, um, Asian community um, is not so central. And our ideas were to foster more the open source adoption and also increase the number of contribution coming from this part of the world. So what do we uh, actually do? So for the Asia organization, we focus on three main areas. Uh, as many other open source organizations, open, um, OpenStack or Rupo, um, Fedora, we develop software and we release, of course, our software and projects uh, under open source license. Everything can be uh, found on, uh, on GitHub. Uh, we also organize a lot of um, events in order to bring people together. So we have, uh, similar to the OpenShift Commons, we have the Force Asia Summit that happened every year in Singapore and throughout the year. We um, organize a smaller event and meet up in different uh, cities where Force Asia members are. We, um, uh, and apart from that, we organize uh, program, online program, uh, where people can participate. We have coding contests. We're doing uh, hackathons and collaborate with the university um, and college to, to deliver some courses online. How do uh, we sustain the operation of the organization? Basically, through software as a service, we also offer hardware merchandise. We organize uh, fun events from sponsorship, and we offer consulting services. So this is uh, just uh, some photo of uh, our uh, developers in the Force Asia community. Um, and uh, I would like to give uh, some numbers so that uh, we can have a um, clearer um, picture of the scale and the size of, uh, of the community. Um, we hosted all of our projects on, on GitHub and um, mostly every 15 minutes there will be a most pull request. We have about 35,000 people subscribed into the mailing list and social media. On GitHub, we have um, around 4,000 developers. Of course, not everyone uh, is active, but um, like people come in and out over the years. And through the programs that we run every year, we train about 2,000 new uh, joiner and developers to contribute to open source project, not only from the Bosnia project, but many people uh, contribute to um, a project that um, foster in, in, in the whole uh, ecosystem. Um, uh, we often organize like meetings um, and events where people can get together in a smaller group um, according to, um, to their location. We maintain an Force Asia blog with about uh, 100 uh, plus authors um, written um, technical um, articles related to um, projects that we develop. 
So these are a few projects that we um, uh, developed with the Force Asia community over years. Um, so say I, which is an alternative to Google Home or Alexa Echo, we have um, our own uh, source engine, uh, open source, source engine like a source bird. We, uh, we have an open source game. Um, uh, Labby, uh, Labby Green or uh, Melix in our own um, uh, desktop um, environment. Pocket Sign Lab on the top right, you can see bslab.io is an open source hardware that we uh, foster recently. Event EA is an uh, open source event management uh, system. So many different um, uh, topics based on uh, the interest of the community. And um, I would like to go a little bit uh, back into the, the history, uh, what brought us here today. So in 2009, my partner Mario Belling and I founded the Force Asia with the goal to connect a community in Asia with the global Force developers, as mentioned earlier. And uh, in this year, so the first thing that we, we did is to connect with the community. We hosted uh, the GNOME Asia the first time in Vietnam. And uh, by doing this, we got connect with people, GNOME users. Uh, there's many uh, Linux user group around Asia, uh, the neighboring country in Vietnam, in Cambodia, Singapore, Malaysia and many more. So when we hosted the GNOME Asia event the first time in Vietnam, we got connected with the GNOME Foundation where we get many speakers coming from GNOME and we learn from them how they run the community. At the same time, we take this chance to connect with the local Linux user group and um, started to um, to develop our own Linux distribution. As mentioned, this was the core of the Melix, one of our uh, Linux distribution later on. In 2010, so we continue to kickstart more projects. And uh, this year we hosted the mini DevCon where we get connect with the DBN community. DBN of course have a very long history um, of development and we were very lucky to get many DBN uh, developers to join us and share their knowledge, how they um, how they set up infrastructure and how they uh, draw um, uh, the communities about their project. And like, we take them as an example and continue to build up uh, the um, community around our projects. And in this year, we um, we move on from the Force Asia Summit to host the, um, uh, move on from the GNOME Asia Summit to host the Force Asia Summit. Uh, the idea is to bring different projects together, GNOME, TBN, uh, VLC, and we basically we open a platform that invite um, different organization who wanted to connect with the Asian community. So for many people, um, reaching out to Asia is not only about localization to, to get to increase the number of users, but um, with the hope that they, each project can gain the contributors through through the very big um, Asian community. And we open, decided to open this flat platform to invite many different projects to join us. Um, this is some picture taken in 2010. Uh, I want to share a little bit uh, of lesson learned from, from this. So um, when we started to build a community in Asia, uh, one thing that we find very important is to, to understand the community landscape, which is to understand the demographic, what kind of people that are involved um, that surrounding a specific um, region, uh, what kind of uh, programming languages that they are interested in, uh, their uh, profile, their basic knowledge, and of course, we need to understand like what uh, are the um, barriers for people to participate in open source project. For instance, back then in Vietnam, um, English is still uh, um, uh, a barrier. It's, it's not the case right now as people are getting much better in communication with different languages. But in the, in the beginning, it was difficult to, to get people uh, on board. And uh, we need to understand the interest of the community uh, 
in this region, of course, like unlike uh, Europe or, um, or America, traveling from places to places is a big thing for 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 for, for, uh, for ASEAN people. Um, especially we don't have the um, uh, the um, uh, the um, you know um, visa restriction from places to places. It's very difficult, um, make it difficult for people to travel, and that's why there's a lot of desire from the community that they can go out of their country to connect with other people. And we see that um, this is an opportunity how to motivate people to, uh, to, to engage. In 2011, we, um, we focus on uh, design topics. So we connect with people by organize more um, um, open, uh, open design events. So basically, um, show people what are the things that they can do with free software. So there are many, uh, of course, there are a lot of uh, problems that we can fix with software, but we realize that there is an uh, interest in young people um, uh, in this uh, uh, region around graphics design. So we show them uh, what kind of LIPO tools that are available that they can um, uh, make use of for, um, for their projects. And uh, uh, this year, we actually connect with the liver graphics community, uh, many uh, designers and artists coming from from Europe to to join our design week, and they bring in their their knowledge and experience of how to um, not only use um, uh, open source tooling for design, but how to share design and how how to contribute back to projects like Kim or Inkscape. And it's as a basis for uh, for us to reach out to more uh, people, uh, like from university, from our students, and design to foster more the adoption of open source. This is some pictures in 2011. Um, the lesson that we learned this year. Um, to, order to, to get to the community, you need to be part of the community. Of course, you need to uh, to see um, to bring uh, to bring software that satisfy the need of the people. In this case, it were uh, it were design and, um, and and art for the student in in that university. Um, work with positive. Um, brain and image also of course so um, uh, people want to associate with a positive um, community that doing cool things that help the ecosystem and one thing that we focus a lot um, uh, for our community is to show people that the opportunities that open source can bring to them um, uh, like recognition, the opportunity in the future uh, that they can get a, a job or, or they can have get a chance to travel elsewhere to connect with other um, community members. Um, and uh, one thing that um, the tooling that you that you uh, that you use and choose for your development should be something that the local community or the members that you want to reach out and that you want to engage are accustomed, are accustomed with. In 2012, we um, continue to develop more application, and that was also our second year of um, Google Summer of Code. This is one application, um, FIMIA, which allows you to, to send photo in different um, social media. Uh, so we uh, the advantage for for being part of um, some like coding program like Google Summer of Code was giving a chance for us to connect with projects all over the world. So during this, so uh, as you know, if some of you participate in the program, you understand that the contribution that you get from this program sometimes is not um, so big because uh, the student needs a lot of um, guidance and effort from the mentor to contribute. But through this program, we got a chance to connect with over 300 different organizations and projects around the world that um, opened up many possibilities for us and many learning opportunity. how we can improve uh, the practice and um, the approach that we, uh, that we want to uh, follow in our own organization. Uh, in 2013, 
we uh, continue to foster open source in education and moving our um, infrastructure to host this uh, solution. So at that time, be before this year, so we run everything on ourselves, um, but we started to realize that we want to focus more on development rather than spending time to maintain uh, the infrastructure. So we decided to move our uh, projects to, to GitHub Yes, yeah, so some people also asked why GitHub, not uh, not GitLab, or another open source tooling. But uh, our decision was based on the people that we have um, in the community, the developers, uh, as, as on GitHub. So we we just had to make decision where people um, more accustomed to. Uh, this is uh, some workshop that we organized uh, throughout Vietnam uh, in collaboration with uh, school and university. Um, yeah, so this is in 2014, uh, we moved the Force Asia Summit to, to Cambodia, and this is also the year that we started our first open source hardware projects. Uh, this is the Pocket Science Lab. Uh, the, um, this is the one, the, the latest version actually before when it wasn't like this. The reason why we uh, we wanted to um, to invest our time and efforts into open source hardware because uh, one of the um, participants of the Force Asia Summit was an, a teacher coming from India came to us with a problem, asking us how we can make a science topic more interesting for the students. Many students in India, they don't have access to devices and the same as Southeast Asia. Um, so in order to learn basic uh, or to make experiment, if there is something that they can touch and they can measure, it could be much uh, better and more interesting for, for, for the young student. And he asked us whether is there anything in the open source uh, that he can use. So that was the reason why we said, okay, so this is a, an interesting problem to solve. And some of our um, uh, developers really interested in uh, hardware development. That's why we decided to develop this pocket sign lab. So, so basically it's a small device that um, has many features uh, built in, for instance, oscilloscope, multimeter logic analyzer, wave generator, everything built inside the device. You just need to connect it together uh, with a uh, with your mobile phone through an app, uh, then you can just uh, use this as a, as a normal um, uh, oscilloscope or, or um, multimeter. Yeah, and we 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 uh, release uh, the design open source, the firmware also open source, and this project brought us a lot of uh, opportunity to connect with the hardware and uh, community in uh, in China. So we produced um, this hardware in Sunjian. At that time, uh, one of our community member who spoke actually uh, Chinese go to China, connect with many uh, local community. There's a, a do-it-yourself community in Sunjian. Uh, we also have many years connection with the Linux user group there and this was this project will give us a chance to and uh, we, we will give us a chance to um, to work closely with the people and engage uh, with them on uh, on this project something that we learned from uh, from the hardware production that I want to share uh, with you uh, Production in China right, uh, is always easier if you have a, a Chinese speaking person and if you reach out to the local community, they are more than willing like, to help you and support you along the way. Uh, it is a longer development cycle compared to software, high investment and high risk, of course. Um, in order to, um, to, to make these investments, you need to think of a self-funding um, uh, model before um, you do so. The build of materials, um, this is something that normally if you need to do a prototype um, or production, the, um, the, uh, the manufacturer will ask for the build of materials that you need um, to, to send them in advance. And uh, many other things that you need to, to understand, for instance, uh, the manufacturer's offer, which is something that's uh, uh, cheaper than the, 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 the normal um, 
pass, but you need to like pay attention um, that need to test everything and uh, you need to understand like uh, holidays is, is schedule of the manufacturers and their availability. So these are some of the lessons um, that we learn from hardware production. Of course, I'm not going to go into detail. Uh, we have uh, we document the work and if you are interested in doing hardware, we can share more later. In 2015, that was um, uh, the year that we moved our Force Asia Summit to uh, to Singapore and, and started to home the Force Asia Summit in Singapore. Uh, the reason why we pick Singapore um, as the place, uh, if you are familiar with the um, the, uh, the, um, the the uh, the the policy uh, in Asian country, so Singapore is really uh, open and, and flexible. Unlike many places, uh, to run an event in Singapore, you uh, do not require an event license, yeah, and uh, the government have a strong support to uh, to the tech community and also to open source um, uh, um, uh, community. So that's why we, we moved to Singapore. Uh, in that year, besides the Force Asia Summit hosted in Singapore, we also partnered uh, up with uh, the Open Tech in, the, um, in Europe. Uh, where we organize uh, together the Open Tech Summit Europe. So basically, this is um, uh, the continued version of the Linux task. If you, uh, if some of you know about the Linux task, after the Linux task ended, um, a few people in the community want to continue the momentum. That's why we work together with them to run the um, annual Open Tech uh, Summit in, in Berlin. In the same year, we started to work on Event Yay system, uh, which is our own open source event management, uh, management that help us to, to run our events. So if you can think of something like Event Pride or, or, or Shay, so, so this is include payment system call for speaker and scheduling that anything that you can think of as an organizer point of view. Um, so everything included in um, in this um, uh, event yay system. In 2016, uh, we launched uh, the Code Heat online coding program, as mentioned earlier, uh, to help people to to guide people how to actually contribute to to, to open source. Uh, projects in a practical way. So basically, uh, what they do is to go on on GitHub and fix um, issue or open pull request directly and get uh, comment and guidance from the mentor directly on, on the issues. So so basically, we, we give the prize, uh, we send our prizes like certificate, uh, Squack, and also uh, the winner can can join us at the Force Asia Summit in, in Singapore. And um, we only uh, ran for three seasons, three seasons, and every season we got about 650 to 700 participants and uh, 2,000 most pull, pull requests every, every season. Uh, this is some of the outreach activity that our uh, community member help us to organize in, uh, in India. Lesson uh, that we learned from um, from this year, um, of course. So, uh, when when you run any program, uh, or when 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 you want to get contributor to, to your projects, you need to have a very clear expectation. Uh, in we try to keep every repository of Force Asia uh, with a contribution guidelines, making very easy for people to um, uh, to find um, the answer or to set up locally. And we also encourage um, uh, peer, uh, peer reviewers, the minimum two reviewers per pull request. And uh, um, we try to promote mentor roles. Uh, developers, uh, we started to, to realize that uh, people are very happy to help each other. So when you help people, uh, when you have somebody to, to fix a problem, uh, it's feel that a, a big achievement and a lot of, of our uh, members like to um, to, to, to mentor the, the newcomer. So we foster more, um, empower people into this direction. Start and have workshops. So this is some of other activity we do in in Belga, um, India. 
uh, and uh, similar the science tactic um, in the, in Singapore. In 2017, we um, we developed the um, uh, documented the best practices that we published on our on our blog. There's some of the things, um, of course, like everyone uh, is here probably aware of this, but it's always important to write things down and to direct people into the documentation. So some of the practices that we share was to march issue with the pull request or to uh, break big issue into smaller issue. To always provide tests uh, for for whatever you build. I I I I've been like listening to the talk today and like tests were mentioned a lot. And of course, it's the same for for many uh, open source project. Uh, um, change uh, so so make sure that you state your changes in the pull request and encourage people to review each other PRs. Um, document why coding um, on the right access. So basically, you, there are different access level in the project, and people should earn it by by their contribution. And one thing that we learn after many years is to stop people from having private chat. So if anything related to development of a project, we um, we encourage people stop. To, to ping the, the maintainer or developer, but rather have the conversation um, uh, directly on um, on our like public uh, Gitter channel of the project. And in the same year, we developed SUSI AI. As I mentioned earlier, this is an open source conversational framework. Um, and with our experience in building hardware, we again prototype this uh, speaker based on the, the Raspberry um, uh, Pi, and then we um, uh, and then we uh, actually got uh, in touch with the DBN community that helped us to package for for Susie um, for for DBN, and the project is still continue um, to develop until today. But it's just some of the features. One nice thing about this project. Uh, is the skill CMS. So we try to engage more non-technical people, non-technical contributor into um, the development. So uh, we try by default making very easy for contributors. Um, we develop the skills uh, CMS that allow people to create skill skill basically uh, a line of code that ha that allow you to to connect with uh, to speak to to the device uh, and people can write skill similar to how they write in wiki pdf video article in 2018 um, we have Go out more to connect with our community by having uh, events in India. We're doing Yoga Fest, uh, hacking the, the Indian way. Um, uh, and then uh, we um, also partner up with UNESCO to organize hackathon in Vietnam and, uh, and Singapore. And this is our um, event with the hardware community in China. Uh, and one thing that we've been doing for the past uh, four or five years, which is uh, to bring our community uh, to participate in the uh, CCC, the Chaos Computer Congress. Uh, this is the biggest hacker conference um, in Europe, in in Germany. So many projects that are there. I think last year was 16,000 people, and we learned a lot from uh, uh, from the from the participants here. People, we have a, a booth that people come by and, and give us advice how to uh, to fix uh, our uh, design on the hardware, and we uh, get the chance to connect with, with many other projects. In 2019, last year, we celebrate our anniversary. Um, like I'm very proud well that we managed to go through this uh, 10 years. And of course, it's not the end for us. We continue to work more. Uh, the, the, the first project that we, um, the first new project of 2019 was to um, to take over Voice Republic and release this um, um, this project open source. This is an audio streaming platform that's used by many uh, tech and art uh, events. And um, as the maintainers not be able to to continue anymore, we take it over and uh, force this under the force Asia umbrella. 
in this year, we also launched the Force Asia Academy uh, with the hope that to um, uh, to offer uh, courses and lessons to 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 more um, students that are open source. Uh, this is some of the workshop we run with our partner in Singapore in 2020. Of course, this is a year of challenges for us. What happened uh, this year? Uh, earlier uh, this year in, in January and February, we organized our Open Tech Summit in Bangkok uh, and in Yangon before the pandemic. Uh, for the first time, uh, we organized the mixtures of online and offline events of the Force Asia Summit in Singapore, where we learned a lot, just like um, uh, they, they and they talk today about how to learn and learn how to run an online event for us. It was also a, um, <laughs> a huge uh, lesson of how to streaming and, and do everything ourselves. Um, we uh, because uh, all the um, um, all the problems that happening around COVID-19 production uh, become very difficult in China and also distribution, sub uh, shipping and everything. So we explore um, uh, the possibility of local production. So we participate in one project uh, with, the, with the EU of how to foster uh, an ecosystem where you can build your own design locally. You make a hardware, you send the, um, the design into a makerspace or the fab lab and produce it uh, yourself. Uh, and last month, we also uh, partnered up with UNESCO, IBM, and, and um, SAP to run uh, the hackathon Code the Curve. Um, on um, solution around COVID-19. One thing that we want to focus on this year is people so it's difficult for people to get face-to-face uh, -face connected. We we hope to um, to focus more on documentation around our projects, make it think, make make things easier for people to get on board. And uh, we uh, we we also learn every day how to maintain a healthy and connected community during this uh, this time. And uh, for the past few months, that we've been working on the next version of Event Yage, uh, BS Lab, and Susie AI. A quick summary uh, of what I mentioned. I hope that um, uh, is uh, so. Uh, I don't go too much over time, so I will just end very quickly. Um, develop best practices and friendly uh, and open community. Uh, constantly attracting new talents through coding programs. So most of the coding programs run uh, online. Uh, remoting mentor roles. So you need to understand what your uh, contributors uh, um, and uh, developer want to want to achieve and want to do, and give them the opportunity to to do what they like. Um, and of course, in order to sustain the development, you need to think of different uh, income stream and model that can uh, fund your project. Uh, running a lean organization and infrastructure with small also uh, with, with a small team. So if um, instead of investing in infrastructure, if you can outsource the infrastructure and uh, make it a more lightweight, so your developer can focus on development and uh, partner up with uh, other enterprise and other force projects. So as mentioned, we partner up with uh, with other projects by open up a platform for them to join us. Uh, at Fostem, we also work to uh, with partner with with the uh, with the tour, or we have friends from from VLC. So uh, we also promote MacLouds. And we are a big fan of um, other open source tooling. And at the same time, uh, in uh, foster collaboration, people also use our software, chat, uh, test our software, and give us feedback. OK, so um, if you, I just want to invite you to check out Event J if you run event online. Um, later, uh, later this year, we're going to launch the uh, open hardware campaign where we uh, show people how to be open hardware, what kind of licensing, um, and how, do you, uh, how you can produce locally. Uh, we have, we're running coding programs like Code Heat and Hackathons. We are welcome 
to um, uh, other organizations to reach out to us to to connect with our communities. Um, uh, many projects of us are available on GitHub if you want to check out the uh, the code or want to participate. And uh, finally, the Force Asia Academy is on. If you have any uh, courses or lessons that you want to share, please reach out to us. Uh, you can find uh, Force Asia on uh, LinkedIn, on uh, Twitter, GitHub, and you can also find my contact easily there if you would like to to reach out to me. I'm I'm happy to share um, uh, any lesson that I learned during the past few years. And uh, this is the end of this presentation. Awesome. Um, thank you very much. Um, uh, for those of you who didn't realize, uh, we threw Hong into the fire here at the last minute, and she has done a tour de force in um, giving us the, the, the background and the history of all the collaborations that FOSS Asia has done. It really is impressive. While Hong has been talking, we've been having in the chat some, in a couple of chat spaces, some interesting conversations as well. Uh, one of the things that really um, impressed me um, with the work that you do is your emphasis on um, coding um, workshops and events around coding to drive um, contri contribution and, in, and community engagement. And, and that is, that's something that we're, you know, honestly, we, we do a lot of in OpenShift um, on the corporate side of the stuff, but not so much on the open source side of things. And I think that's that's something a big takeaway for me as as people have been starting to ask us about, you know, could you host an OpenShift Commons um, boot camp on such and such or this? And and I, I'm wondering if that's is that a, one of the what you would consider one of the keys to your success is having all these face to face things. And then the corollary to that is how are you going to run those now um, in a world that's gone virtual due to COVID? And I think you're st you're muted again. You're self muted there, Hong. There you go. You should be unmuted. Can you hear me? Now yes. I can hear. You. Yes. There you go. Okay. Okay. Good. So um. Do, um, so during the, the COVID, I mentioned to you one example. So we, uh, together with uh, UNESCO, so we hold the online uh, hackathon where people can come together to work on, on the topic. And then we also uh, promoting different projects that being done in, in Asia. For instance, I don't know if you're aware of the um, uh, the Trace to Together projects released by the Singapore government under open source. So, um, and, and in Taiwan as well. So there are many initiatives that are going on at the moment. What we learned so far is that each region, they started their own initiatives and uh, there, there is a lack of uh, communication and the lack of unification, how people can actually come together and share what they have developed. So, so I believe that people everywhere also similarly uh, um, uh, develop similar uh, solution like Trace together. In Vietnam, we have our own solution, Cambodia our own solution. So I think uh, the thing that we, we want to do now is to actually bring people together. I, I'm really appreciate to, to have a chance to be here today, just like you. Then you want to re, you create a platform where people can actually share what's going on um, around this topic. And uh, our hope would also draw us more projects in Asia could uh, present and, um, and, 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 and and being uh, heard and uh, more visible to, to, to the people from, from the West. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's one of the, the key things. I mean, there's always the time zone challenges, um, which uh, Alana and Grizz and everybody else uh, have 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 accepted and taken on that challenge today. So thank you. Uh, and and Alana, I, I know you work with um, Hong, um, and you're also on the board of OSI. And Hong, you've got a secret identity there as a, uh, the VP of the OSI initiative. But um, Alana, in in your work at the OSI level. Um, can you talk a little bit about how OSI has been um, helping to bridge some of those um, between different communities? Help folks? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm the chair of the membership committee, uh, and so one of the things that I work on within the OSI is uh, engagement with affiliate members. And actually, it was really great coming on uh, 
like sort of at the top of the hour when I did, because one of the folks that I have been engaging with a lot in my affiliate meetings uh, has been Siri. Uh, so uh, one of the things that we have been doing is holding quarterly meetings uh, for all of our affiliate representatives to come together, chat about topics that are important to them, uh, talk about how the OSI can support them and facilitate those conversations. Uh, and we're experimenting with a few different things. Uh, and then as far as time zones go, because uh, it is a uh, global community, uh, I tend to hold two of these calls. Uh, so I'll hold one uh, aimed at like uh, Asia Pacific time zones and one aimed at like uh, EMEA, so Europe, Middle East, Africa time zones. Uh, because I'm in uh, the United States, I have to be able to attend both. So uh, my, my time zone uh, is not optional, but um, that's one of the things that we are doing. And we're currently working on uh, investigating like other ways that we could potentially support our members and uh, uh, you know, br bridge these uh, different communities. Uh, one of the things that we have upcoming as well this year is a, a state of the source uh, conference, a virtual conference. We haven't held one before, so I think that's still in the planning stages, but uh, very exciting. So, so Grizz, um, being from Google and um, Google's has a wonderful Google of summer and all kinds of wonderful coding events and things that help bring people together. What 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 do you see as some of the useful tools that we might take away from um, to bridge some of these communities? Yeah, so actually some of the experience that I have it's outside Google, and I think like I can I can relate a lot to to what Han was saying. Like uh, last year. I partner with a few people down in Mexico. I'm originally from Mexico, and we have been doing a lot of efforts to bring open source communities and participation of Latin folks in open source projects. And the challenge across Latin America is that so many countries have different initiatives that are that are so also like disconnected. Then last year, we created this event called the Cumbre de Contribuidores, the open source software, which is like the first summit of contributors for open source, uh, open source software in Latin America. And that event helped us realize about all uh, initiatives going in so many countries that we couldn't connect. So what, would, what did I learn from that first event was that uh, what Hon said, it's very challenging to learn what is happening in the world if you live in one of these countries. So you are somewhat disconnected. Like we heard a lot of stories that language is one barrier in which you cannot access these events, but also you are not in the know of like when are these happening, where should I travel to, how should I like register even to some of the foundations that do open source, and because language and availability of these resources is such a high barrier, these people don't engage. So that that is potentially what causes some segregation, right? And now, thinking a little bit to what we have done at Google, going into these global programs like Google Summer of Code or internships that we, like this year, for, for instance, we're hosting uh, interns from around the globe to work in open source um, projects given that we are distributed. I think the fact that Google is such a well-known institution kind of makes people gravitate to, towards that. So there's people like find, like searching on the internet or trying to do research. They will find programs driven by Google, but they won't find programs driven by less known communities like this community we were trying to, to foster in Mexico or the same community that somebody was trying to foster in Argentina or in other Spanish speaking country. So I think like just bridging those those gaps on like how do we let other people know that we're working in similar efforts and that these things are happening is 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 a key. And for like actually Elena, I think like some of the people who created this uh, this organization with us in Mexico attended one of the quarterly partners meeting. And it was such a moment of realization of, oh my God, there's so many communities, so many resources that we need to leverage. And now they have ideas on how to like connect and stop reinventing the wheel, but start partnering more with the central tools and services. That's so awesome to hear. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's like organizations like OSI um, have, have do, do a really nice service of, of like helping to bridge all of that information. 
um, and and do that. And, and it, the interesting thing for me is today, like I didn't expect um, to hear like the history of uh, FOSS Asia um, or to learn more about what's going on in open infrastructure um, in the summit and that and different places. But I also think that um, as community development people, as people who are managing this, running foundations, participating foundations, that we are kind of the glue. Like the hallway conversations that we all have when we're at, at OzCon, I wore my OzCon Memorial hoodie here, but these events where we actually get to go to is where I would meet people like Gris or Daniel or Alana or Hong in, in the past. And, and now without them, um, one of this this is my um, little attempt today uh, at trying to bridge um, and re-glue us all together again so we can find out what each other's doing um, because we're we're missing that I mean we are in for some of us we're in our technology silos right so I'm, I'm definitely in a cloud native uh, silo very kubernetes centric kind of world these days with a, a dash of OpenStack and Prometheus and about 20 other initiatives. But I I don't hear about what's going on in Asia or Mexico um, as much um, and other than throughout, through my colleagues at Red Hat who are down there who say, okay, Diane, we need you to do something here or find someone to speak there. So I, I think events like today, which I, I really love hosting things like this, where we keep showcasing different um, initiatives in around the globe, um, and and I, I like Alana's idea about um, having the two meetings. I've seen that Kubeflow does that. Um, some you know other initiatives do. They, they have one in the morning and one in the evening, um, and hopefully in my schedule I can get somewhere because I'm always in West Coast time, which is always meeting in the middle. But um, I I think that's really part of it too. Is is the language barriers um, and the time zone issues that we have. And and not ignoring them, like not and trying really hard not to be North American EMEA centric, is really um, that. And then having having um, making sure we make the bridges to the other communities and to the other regions is really been um, is key. Because when I usually think when I think when I initially talked about doing this talk, I was thinking about bridging op other open source projects like in the cloud native space. That was really, I, I'll be honest, it wasn't about bridging regions and organizations. It was more about that. But I think you've turned my perspective on its head. So I, I don't know, Daniel, if you want to add in something on that. Oh yeah, it was, I was, so you know, I'm part of the inner source commons um, and one of the first uh, contributions we are, we are having in the community are translations. The translations specifically to Chinese and Japanese and German and French, maybe. So those are kind of the very first, uh, well, kind of easy places to go and help the community. And this is at the same time you are lowering the barrier to enter into the community because then you are having this translated to other languages, and that's absolutely great. So um, yeah, so I was I was thinking about how how to engage with new contributors, and then I was linking this idea with what Thierry said before about how you grow the next generation of leaders for the community. So how can this be? And instead of being so perhaps in even uh, English centric or so, even when this is this is the language that we all understand each other or, or some of us at least, um, how to grow the community to other areas of the world. Um, even more, I know uh, Diana, I've been talking to you several times about the cultural differences. This book I was reading, The Cultural Map, which is absolutely great. Um, perhaps I know how to talk with other Spaniards because I'm originally from Spain or, or to some other people. But then when you change the country or, or the, uh, you know, the cultural background, it's like, oh, so what do you do now? Um, so I, I would like to bring the, the, the work we are doing with, uh, together with the ASF. So Chris is uh, yeah. holding the position of VP of DNI, right? Yes. Um, so maybe, maybe you can you can bring some more insights about the, some of the survey results we have. Yes. Uh, so to Daniel's point, uh, a very interesting hypothesis that we have been exploring is that concept of cultural differences, because even though like open source is global, 
And do you expect people to collaborate on the same projects? And oftentimes we don't take like step back and understand two things that the person that is working with you and solving the same issue might come from a different working culture where that person might be waiting for permission or validation or acknowledgement before making a contribution. And you are expecting that person to just go get it because that, because that is what you understand as open source. So that is one of the, of the concepts that we were researching with, with Daniel on the ASF. And we have this also another concept, which is the cultural migrants, migrants, the person who like was born and raised in a culture, but later in life moved to either study or work in a different culture who has had that switch of like the need to adapt and understand multiple cultures because that kind of like opened your perspective into being able to, to notice and, and see like, oh, maybe that person is trying, you know, like is waiting for me to respond or waiting for me to, to collaborate in something. Whereas like people who haven't experienced that, it's harder for us to think that, you know, like beyond the screen, beyond the open source project, that might be other nuances that, that can be helping us, you know, like stay within the same group of people, same project and not really bridging all the, the cultural richness. So that is one of the insights that, that one of the hypotheses that we have been investigating, and I think it's very interesting to see. So when, when do you think you'll have the results of this research so that you could come back and share it with us again? I think that's, it's really, I think everybody in, in our heads, we know that it's true. We just don't know all how, of the, how it's happening and what we can do um, to facilitate better conversations and, and people's engagement in our community. So I think that will be the interesting thing, the application of that. Yes, so this research that uh, Daniel and also another professor are like, there's, there's multiple people behind this research, but the, the research had three stages. The first stage was like a survey in which we just uh, collected information from people at the ASF. We're moving into a second phase in which we are going to be applying interviews precisely to deep dive into these hypotheses and understand more on how can we facilitate or, or improve those, those situations. So at the end, we also have a third stage in which we're going to do like a, uh, an analytic, a quantitative analysis to kind of like ground the research. And so your question was like, by when? Right now, we already have the survey um, finished and we're going to be sharing it soon, right, Dan, Daniel? Yeah, yeah, we we have did a couple of dates already. So uh, uh, Asia Pacific friendly and, and Europe and Middle East Africa friendly. So the first one is this nineteenth. So this Friday, right? Yes, and it's public. It's going to be open. It's going to be recorded. So we're going to be sharing the, the results. Perfect. We look awesome. Long. The important part, though, is that this this first uh, sharing only contains the survey results. I think like the rounded report we're looking to write will come when we have the interviews and the quantitative analysis to again, like have a very well-rounded uh, insights and recommendations. So Ilana and Hong, is this resonating with you, this kind of um, creating some awareness around cultural differences? And, you know, I know you, Hong, you were talking about being able to get some exposure for the initiatives for FOSS Asia, but is that is it a, one of the other limiting factors is, is the cultural differences or the different approaches to how communities engage? Oops. I'll let Hong speak to that one. I think she's got more experience with uh, yeah. international events than I do. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, I, yes, so I mentioned uh, earlier in my talk, of course, I think uh, cultural differences is, is something that we really need to, um, uh, to to look into. As you know, a lot of discussion around uh, the world right now about how do you behave in, in a certain way. So there is a huge movement around the code of conduct. And sometimes for people, it's exactly like what Chris says earlier. So if you want to make a PR, you don't know if you should wait for somebody to approve. It's really around like the differences in the culture. When I try to communicate something, some people talk to me very direct way. 
and to you maybe you offended and then you should not but there's certain way so um people should be aware of the background of their contributor where they come from i think that this is a very interesting research um i don't know uh, like based on this research what can we do because at first you you let people aware and then what can kind of happen and what kind of action that they should take in order to to limit misunderstanding and, and, and to, to build a more collaborative and open uh, community. So I think this is a goal. Yeah. So um, I think that the, the, the research on, on, on different cultures and the effect on how people behave on certain communities would be interesting. But what is more interesting is based on this, what kind of guidelines or practice that we we should promote like some people feel uh worry these days i heard a lot of people from the communities i don't know if i should say something maybe some people would say that i violated the rule of uh, um, communication and i might offend somebody so you never know so it, so people should at least uh, learn to um, to be uh, aware of this thing and 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 uh, and, uh, and make other people feel comfortable. Yeah. So uh, I think that yeah, I think it, it's 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 definitely I want to see um, we all intuitively know that there's cultural differences. It's how do we um, take what you learn in your in the the ASFs and the research you're doing and, and the experiences and the practices and, and turn those into best practices and share them around the world so people um, can better create better and healthier engagement practices. And I, I too think that the code of context stuff is incredibly important. Um, even today we were getting trolled online a little bit. So we had, you know, some issues and, you know, and Chris, who is our producer, handled them nicely. Um, so. But I, I also think that it's um, it's it's interesting and it's such a challenge. It's such a, a challenge to do, and um, and I'm really grateful that you're that you're sharing this information with us um, today. And and uh, but I really do want to see um, how we can take um, what you learn and apply it um, in our practices. I think that's the next step. I, one is uncovering the data, and I think we try. Um, we try um, and we fail and we learn and we keep moving you know, forward the processes. But I, I, I also think that we, there's a lot more outreach, um, especially to Asia and Latin cultures that um, in the Kubernetes world and the cloud native world that we could do better. Uh, CNCF has done some great work um, standing up events in China and around around the world in different places, but I still, still think there's uh, a lot, lot more that we can do and that I can do. And so um, giving giving the podium to you guys as often as possible um, is, is really, I think, one of the keys here. It, and, is, and, you know, the time zone challenges are one thing, but I think I can get up at night. Um, I don't mind. Um, you're staying up late and, and wherever you are. But it seems, I don't know what it is, but everybody has got more light in their background than I do. Um, <laughs> it's been rain. It's been pouring rain all day today and gray so it's like ah I might as well be still sleeping so but I, I, I'm just very grateful um, for the work that all of you have done um, at the ASF at OSI at FOSS Asia um, in the inner source because it's 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 interesting it, it's like this Rubik's cube right so there's cultural stuff there's um, time zone stuff there's technology layers there's inner source pieces so whether this is you know, a collaboration between a bunch of corporations trying to build a product to be sold to enterprises or enterprises trying to apply open source practices to their internal processes. There's so many aspects to um, community engagement and how, you know, you, you even see this with inner source. I, 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 I see it at least sometimes is that enterprises prohibit their um, employees from contributing or participating actively in open source projects. So there's like all of these barriers to participation. And I think in some way, um, and I keep coming back to this, and I, maybe it's because I've been drinking the Kool-Aid all day today, is that um, the community development people, people like yourselves and the other 24 folks who have been on today are really kind of the glue. They're, they're the conduit of these practices and sharing them with, um, with each other. and making sure that when we 
find out the research from your survey and from we learn the lessons from the FOSS Asia um, stories, that we can carry those stories back and apply them wherever we are and whatever technology and, and, and try and bridge those communities. Because I, I actually think even though the work that Daniel and I have done have been like to identify who are the people that connect in between projects, that that's not enough. It's the people who have the maybe uh, not higher in better level, but like an overview of all of these different things um, that that will help us bridge some of these um, cultural um, and uh, inclusivity issues and diversity issues um, and create more podiums for people to stand up on and share their stories. And that, that's my hope, all of this. And I, I know that all of the work that's going on in your communities and the foundations that you work on is part of that process. So uh, I can't thank you enough for participating and, and showing up today, even with the time zone challenges, uh, and sharing your stories. So, uh, Daniel, I don't know if you want to add in a few words or Hong or if there's anything else you'd like to add and make sure that you, points you got across. Oh, I, I would say I, I would say that thank you all, all of the speakers, all of the uh, AMA panelists, all everyone that has made this a uh, successful day. I learned a ton of things. So, yeah, thank you all for, for your time today. Yes.